Here we are at the 2025 ACT Expo in Anaheim, California, and behind me is Revolt Motors. Now, there's been a lot of interest in this hybrid diesel Class 8 semi-rig. So kind of starting at the, at the front, we've got you know, a classic Peterbilt 379. So just your, your classic long hood kind of operator's truck. Right? All American. Yeah. Got a, uh, a nine liter Scania DC09 engine powering a 250 kilowatt generator. So this is our range extender. This is our diesel range extender. It puts 250 kilowatts into the batteries. This kind of solves all of your range anxiety. Right? right? All the you know, high voltage power distribution is under the cab. Diesel tank right here, so I think we've got an 80 gallon tank. That gives us our um, 1,200 miles of combined mm -hmm. range. And then right next to it, we've got our second fuel source, which is obviously the batteries. 210 kilowatt hours of LFP chemistry batteries. Mm -hmm. So we can do 100 miles of all electric range. And you can plug it in if you have the infrastructure, you can plug it in. And you don't necessarily have to have the infrastructure exactly. to get this going. Yep. And then, or you could get the infrastructure at a different, later time. Exactly. And you still already have this yep. available. There's, there's kind of two components to this. So we've got the drivetrain system, right? All mm -hmm. the physical assembly of all of these components and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. The next step is, you know, all of the software and the control infrastructure that tells the truck when to draw power from the batteries, when to draw power from the diesel, when to, you know, how much power to push from each, how much regen to do. So it's also a stuff. smart truck too. It's like a true yeah. uh, retrofit. It is. Where you have smart technology in the interior yeah. and it still looks like an all-American Peterbilt. So say somebody wants to place an order, do they have to provide you with the, the truck itself? Or do you provide the, the Peterbilt? We, we can How does do that both, work? Right? Do both? So if you want to place an order, yep. the first step, go on the website, fill out the, the contact form. The first step is, hey, let's make sure that the application you want to deploy this in mm -hmm. is going to create value for you. So if you're driving LA to Phoenix at 60 miles an hour, hauling a you know 40,000 pound load, getting 10 miles a gallon with a super efficient truck, yep. we're probably not going to help you, okay. right? It's not going to justify the cost. Yeah. Fair enough. If you're going, you know, through mountains, through, you know, your route is all rural roads through a bunch of small towns where you're starting and stopping, going over hills, right? Mm -hmm. And you're getting six and a half, five and a half, four miles a gallon. We're probably going to be a huge addition to your, like we're going to have a, a really short payback period. We're going to create value for you. Okay. So step one is really, let's make sure that it's a good fit, right? Okay. We're not about we've got this product, it's great for everybody. We're about, hey, what applications make the most sense? Like, where do we create value that doesn't need to be subsidized by the federal government, by the state, by a grant, any of that? We qualify for those. That was actually my yeah. next question because there's a, there's a lot of confusion out right now about what subsidies are and are not available. Yes. So, so where are we at with that with you guys? Yeah, so we are, you know, CARB compliant, we are, in the process of getting our EPA certified configuration, you know, all of these other things. We're very close on that. We've been working on that actually since before we started the company. And the fact that it's CARB compliant yes. is a huge factor because there's going to be different states that are going by CARB rules yeah. and others that are not. So the drivers or fleets are going to be able to enter those states without yeah. any issue. Exactly. And we've got a great team that'll walk you through all of the regulatory and compliance and all that stuff for your specific need, your application, your you know regulatory environment, which is, a lot more of a patchwork mm -hmm. than a consistent kind of across mm -hmm. the board. Okay, so next question that everybody wants to know, pricing. Yeah, so the base kit, you know, if we're gonna do a retrofit, a repower, yeah. base kit before any incentives, any of that stuff is 200,000. Okay. Right? Again, that's, you know, we look at applications where we drive an ROI, that's why it's the first question we ask. Mm -hmm. So what's the turnaround time when someone places an order, whether for the system, retrofit, or for a whole vehicle? Yeah, so it's it's about a week for install right now. We're, okay. um, you know, we are looking for, I'd say another, you know, five to six fleets that have applications where we really drive value. In 2020, a company called Hylion introduced a vehicle similar in concept to Revolts, a hybrid electric truck powered in part by natural gas. But Hylion eventually halted sales and development of the truck citing high component costs and limited customer demand. We asked Gus why he believes Revolt will succeed when Hylion did not. They had a CNG powered system. That's true. And so 
I think when I talk about our focus on applications, it's really important. The applications where CNG is a really quite prominent mm -hmm. is really in return to yard applications. So there's not a lot of truck stops that have CNG pumps, right? Mm -hmm. So generally the fleets that have adopted them are in you know shorter duration going back to the same yard where they have the infrastructure to, to fill up the CNG tanks. Hylian had a sleeper truck with CNG tanks. So the people that purchase a long wheelbase sleeper are not deploying that in a situation where it comes back to the yard every night. Got it. So I think that was sort of fundamental challenge mm -hmm. in terms of adoption of just that application. It wasn't fit for purpose necessarily. I think their, their technology, their concept was really good. Maybe they were early, maybe it was different. You know, I only know how we're approaching solving these challenges, but I think that we've worked with fleets from the start and that's why we focus on the applications and, and interacting early on Right. to say, will this work with your needs? It comes right down, does it work or yeah. does it not work for the purpose it's intended yeah. for? Exactly. Well, Gus, thank you very much for your time. Yeah. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with next year at, uh, yeah. at this time. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing more of these Revolt uh, Peterbilt out on the road yeah. uh, before then.